Where the devil is this Romeo? Came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. I spoke with this man. Why? That same pale, hard-hearted wench? That Rosaline? Torments him so that he will sure run mad? Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his home. Uh, a challenge on my life. Romeo will accept it. Any man that can write a letter may answer one. Nay, he will answer his letters, master. How he dares, being dared. Alas, poor Romeo is already dead. Stab with a white wench his black eye. Run through the ear with a love song. The very pain of his heart cleft with a blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he the man to encounter Tybalt? Why? What is Tybalt? More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's a courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song. Keeps time, distance, and proportion. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist. A duelist! A gentleman of the very first house, of first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Pasado, the Panto Reverso, the Hay. The what? The box of such antic lisping, affecting fantasticos, these new tuners of accents. By a suit, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good horse. Why is not this such a lateral thing, Grand Sir, that we should be thus afflicted by these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these pardon me's, who have stood so much on that new form that they cannot sit at ease on the old bench? Oh, their bones, their bones. Oh, here comes Romeo. With that his row like a dried herring. Oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? Now he is to the numbers that Petrarch once floated, and Laura to his lady was a dried wench. Mary, she had a better love to berhyme her. Ditto a doughty, Cleopatra a gypsy, Helen a hero, buildings and harlots. Tis be a grey eye or so, but not to the purpose. Bonjour, Romeo. There's a French salutation to your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morning to you both. What counterfeits did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon me, Mercutio. My business was great. And in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much to say, such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hands. Meaning, to curtsy, thou hast most kindly hit it. Most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink? For flower? Right. Then why is my pump so well flowered? Sure wit. Follow me this jest until thou hast worn out the pump. After, when the single soul is worn, the jest may remain, after the wearing, solely singular. Oh, single soul jest. Solely singular for the singleness. Benvolio, come between us, my wits fail. Swits and spurs, swits and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done. For thou hast more wild goose, and one of thy wits then, I am sure, I have my whole pie. Was I with you there for the goose? Thou was not with me for anything when thou was not there for the goose. I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Nay, good goose, bite not. Thy wit is a very bitter sweet. It is a most sharp sauce. Is it not then? Well served into a sweet goose? Oh, he is a chevron that stretches from an inch narrow to an L broad. I stretch out the word broad, which add to goose, proves thee far and wide a broad goose. Why is this not better than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, not by art as well as by nature. For this dribbling love is like a great natural that runs up, that runs lolling up and down to hide his ball in a hole. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to soften my tail against the hair? Thou else wouldst have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would, I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail. It meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer, sir. Here's goodly gift. 